Is a Mac a good machine for software development? There's a few areas where I think the Mac is hard to beat, but in other areas, you should avoid it. I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of using Mac for software developers, and then I'll make a few recommendations for which Mac to buy and what you should pay attention to. This is the machine that I use. It's a 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro, but this is actually not the best option for software development. But I'll share later on why I still bought this. Before we start though, I have something for you. It's a free guide to help you make better design decisions in seven steps. You can get it at rm.co slash design guide. I've tried to keep this guide short to the point so you can get the information quickly and apply it immediately to what you're doing. So rm.co slash design guide and the link is also in the description of this video. If you use a Mac, you probably also use Mac OS. But let's first talk about the other two main operating systems, Linux and Windows. Which OS you use, for a large part, comes down to personal preference. But the majority of services on the internet runs on Linux servers. That's for a lot of reasons. One is that it's free. There's no point in paying a license fee for each server if you have a huge data center. Also, with tooling like Docker, images running in the cloud are mostly running some version of Linux. And Linux is designed to be operated by the command line, locally or remotely. And that works well if you have to manage lots of servers. Windows has other advantages. If you're programming enterprise applications, it's a great option with c -sharp .net, the surrounding ecosystem. Visual Studio is a great IDE. Though nowadays, Visual Studio Code is a lot more popular than Visual Studio. More than twice as many people use it. And then you have Windows subsystem for Linux. I haven't used this personally, but of course, it has a lot of Linux functionality to Windows, which is nice. So is there like a winner? Well, if you look at the Stack Overflow survey of this year, you see that almost half of the software developers use Windows. About 40% use Linux and about a third use macOS. Those percentages add up to more than 100%, but of course, lots of developers use multiple OSs in their work. I'll share five reasons why I think macOS is a great option for software developers. And I'll share five reasons why I think you should avoid it like the plague. Now, before I dive into that, give this video a like. It helps others find my content on YouTube. The first reason why Mac is good for software development is that the OS is Unix compliant. If you're doing a lot of backend development work, Mac OS is actually a nice option. Mac OS is a Unix 3 compliant operating system, and it's also POSIX compliant, and therefore can handle ports of most Linux software. This is what the really awesome Homebrew Package Manager does. You also have nice apps, such as iTerm2, the terminal that works much better than the default one in Mac OS. And the hardware is generally good, except for a few turds in the past, like the 12-inch MacBook or the overheating Intel MacBook Pros. Also, the OS is really well optimized for user-friendliness and creative workflow. So doing your everyday work or things like watching a movie or listening to music on a Mac is very pleasant. Another reason is that Mac OS has really useful gestures and keyboard shortcuts. All the different keyboard shortcuts make software development, which is keyboard focused, a breeze. I'm still regularly learning new keyboard shortcuts, so I'm, I'm quite far from being a complete keyboard wizard. I'm more of a keyboard hobbit, I guess. Another really great built-in tool is Spotlight. You can use this to quickly find stuff and launch apps. Another good reason to get a Mac is the battery life. If you're working on one of the Apple Silicon laptops, you'll have the best battery life in the business. This is really handy. If you're working remote, you don't have access to electricity, Apple's modern laptops will get you through the day comfortably. The fourth reason is iOS development and web development. You need a Mac for iOS development unless you don't want to deploy your app to the App Store for some reason. If you're doing web development, it's useful to have easy access to Safari. You need to test things on Safari. It doesn't use Chromium under the hood, so you will run into issues. For example, a big difference is that macOS has hovering scroll bars. It's nice because the content can then use a larger portion of the screen real estate, but it might break your web app's layout. And there are a bunch of smaller incompatibilities, especially on mobile where the visible section of the content resizes if you scroll down because the address bar disappears on iOS. The final reason to get a Mac is that Mac OS stays out of your way. For me, if I buy a new Mac machine, getting things ready for work is really easy. I don't need to install a bunch of drivers, uninstall lots of bloatware, copying over settings from the previous machine, and so on. I don't want to do all that stuff. I use my Mac for my business, so it needs to just work. I haven't used Windows for a while, so things 
have probably improved on that end as well, but a Mac simply feels effortless to me to get going quickly. And time is money. Before I dive into the reasons why you shouldn't buy a Mac for software development, I want to show you some of these Apple accessories that Sandmark sent to me. They have a collection of really nice sleeves and cases, full grain leather and feels really premium, like this carrying case for the MacBook Pro. Or here I have a really nice band for the Apple Watch. It feels quite comfortable. I also have the AirPods Pro case here and they have more. It's all part of their leather collection that comes in either black or brown colors. Thanks Sandmark for sponsoring this section of the video. Check them out via the link in the description. So here are five reasons why you shouldn't use a Mac for software development. The first one is if you're developing games. Lots of games, especially the more graphics heavy AAA games are Windows only and Apple simply isn't optimized for gaming. You can certainly do game development on a Mac. I mean, especially if you're developing mobile games, it's pretty nice. But for the more graphics heavy AAA games that also rely on advanced graphics card features that only Nvidia offers, for example, it's really hard and Apple just isn't the right solution for that. So game development, don't get a Mac for that. The second reason not to get a Mac for software development is actually the new Apple Silicon. The new chips are great in terms of power efficiency and speed, but it also means that some software doesn't work perfectly yet or has some caveat like Docker. By default, Docker Desktop in the Apple Silicon version will pull down ARM64 images, which leads to incompatibilities. However, you can specify the platform via command line prompt or Docker Compose YAML file. You can use mixed platforms simultaneously. Docker will either emulate ARM or virtualize x86 as necessary. But if you're not careful, you might create a Docker image locally using ARM64 and then try to run in the cloud in Linux and it won't start. And I know that because it actually happened to me. Also in the past, Mac was the only machine where you could run Linux, Windows and Mac OS. With Apple Silicon, that's no longer the case. The third reason is peripherals. And that's mainly an issue with the cheaper M1 machines. Users can connect just one additional monitor with the M1 MacBook Air and M1 MacBook Pro. It's not an issue on the M1 Pro and Max laptops. Also, the M1 Mac Mini can connect up to two monitors. There are some workarounds using DisplayLink adapters and the USB-C port, but it's going to involve some work setting that up. The fourth reason not to get a Mac is pricing. Depending on the machine you get, it can be very expensive and you'll be paying for lots of stuff that's not important for software development. For example, the screen quality on the laptops is great, but you probably use an external monitor anyway for coding, so you should really pay for that awesome screen. You're also paying for media exporters that are built into the chip. If you're doing video editing, like me, that's useful. For coding, not so much. You're also paying for SD card readers, HDMI outputs, really good speakers on the laptops, all of this is not that important for software development. The final reason not to get a Mac is configurability. You have a limited number of possible chip configurations. If you like customizing your machine, you're not going to be happy with a Mac. There's no way to upgrade things like RAM or hard disk later on. What you buy is what you get. Well, unless you buy the uber, uber expensive Mac Pro, which is totally overkill for most software developers. And at the time of publishing this video, that still runs on Intel. And it's actually beaten in some tasks by the newer, much cheaper Apple Silicon Macs. You have to make sure that when you buy the machine, it's future proof, so you don't have to replace it within a few years. And then you pay Apple's prices for RAM and SSD storage. Okay, a couple of bonus pedantic issues, a few minor annoyances. First, macOS creates dozens of hidden files like .ds store, which can really be annoying if you work with file processing. And they tend to end up in your Git repositories if you forget to add it to your Git ignore file. Second, to this date, macOS can't open an archive file without extracting it. It's really annoying. And finally, window management. Ugh, it's lacking. Not just lacking, it's pretty bad. But you can use a free tool called Rectangle that fixes it. So as a software developer, what Mac should you buy? One machine that I think is a great option for software development is the M1 MacBook Air. It's a truly great laptop and a great value at the price. Works great. I've been using one for the past year to do pretty intense backend and frontend development. 
What's nice as well is that now that the M2 MacBook Air is out, you can find some great deals on the original M1 MacBook Air. If you want a desktop machine, the M1 Mac Mini has the same performance or even a bit better than the M1 MacBook Air due to the fan. And it's pretty cheap. And you get to pick your own monitor, keyboard and mouse. If you need a bit more performance, the 14 inch MacBook Pro is a great option as well. It's more expensive, but it's also a way faster machine with the M1 Pro chip. What you definitely shouldn't buy is this laptop that I bought, the M1 Max, in this case, this is the 16 inch MacBook Pro. The M1 Max has the same CPU performance as the M1 Pro, but you pay more money for stuff you don't need. The reason I got this is because I do video editing and the M1 Max has more powerful encoding and decoding chips. The SD card reader is also really useful because all my cameras record on SD cards and I like the bigger screen because then I don't need a monitor at home when I'm editing videos. Though 16 inch is not the same as working on a big 24, 27 inch monitor. It gets the job done. What you also shouldn't get is an M2 MacBook Air. Why, why am I getting all these machines that nobody should buy? This is a bit more performant than the M1 MacBook Air, but not that much. And it's actually quite a bit more expensive. If you need more performance than the M1 MacBook Air, I'd say go either for the M1 MacBook Pro, which has a fan, so that adds some extra performance, or get the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. It's confusing names. So why did I get this? Well, it's actually not for me, it's for one of my team members. I wanna talk a little bit about the specs. So first, what you buy is non-upgradable. So make sure you know what you need before. In terms of RAM, eight gigabytes does the job, but it's shared memory. So personally, I opted for 16 gigabytes, especially if you wanna run Docker containers locally, you're going to be glad you went with 16 gigabytes. In terms of storage, the base option of 256 gigs is okay, but since the hardware is not replaceable, only get this version if you're really, really sure you don't need the space. Personally, I recommend going for 512 gigs at least. If you're doing web development, that node modules folder can get pretty large pretty quickly, and Docker images can also get quite large, so be aware. I hope this video gave you some insight into whether you should buy a Mac for software development, and which one. If you want to learn more about my Mac setup and the apps I use, there's a few you should definitely know about. Check out this video next. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you soon.